trust issues. I have a brain that learns patterns. And right now, you showing me patterns. Now my antenna's up and you don't like it. I don't like it either. I was green as a golf course behind you. And you showed me red flags. So take it how you want. I'm not trying to avoid being hurt. I'm trying to avoid looking stupid. Because I know better. I remember in my mid-20s. I want to say it was when I was uh, 27, 28. I had a friend that was telling me some stories and some difficulties they were having in their relationship and someone they were really interested in. And I remember that was the first time that I realized when he was telling me what the girl was doing to him in my brain, it kicked in and said, oh man, this is pattern. This is something that people do when they behave this way. It was the first time that I, I, I recognized that things that she was doing to him or saying to him were similar to things that I've experienced in the past. And as I went on and talked to more and more people, they will always be surprised at how much I would know about the person, but I've never met them. And I would tell them things that they will be prone to doing. And I would be very detailed and would tell them why because either I experienced it myself or I've seen someone else experience it and seen the end the result and I remember one time someone telling me you don't fucking know her you don't fucking know at all fuck you they're yelling at me because they had that much love for that person many years later they ended up telling me you were right everything you said was 100% right and I mean I have some podcast episodes early on where I was talking to somebody pineapples years ago and she was telling me, like, you you hit it on the head. I'm like, I know. These are things that I am in tune with. And it goes back to my philosophy on humans is that I trust actions over words. Like recently, I had somebody tell me, I'm going to give you this. I'm going to give you this. And they've been telling me this for many, many months now. But they haven't done it. They haven't done it. Whatever they be saying they're going to do, they haven't done. And I remember telling this person, and I tell this to other people, I trust actions. I trust what you do. Because the reality is that many of us want to do well. We have good intentions. We speak them out. In our lives, it's like we want to lose weight. We want to make money. We want to do these things. And part of it is having your brain be in tune to that lane to that thought process but a big part of that is you implementing you taking action i could say all day i want to lose weight but if i'm stuffing myself with mcdonald's every day guess what it's not going to happen you fundamentally have to take action and that's where a lot of people don't like hearing a lot of things i have to say within my close circles most recently is my daughter god bless her i love her but right now she's at a phase that she's not doing too good in school right now she had four f's and two c's last quarter so right now the main core class is she's failing halfway through the year very likely gonna repeat hope hopefully that's not the case but we'll see how it goes nevertheless what you have here is a scenario of i'm seeing the patterns now the therapist could tell me she's depressed, all these different things. And I'm like, I get it. And I and I respect that and I'll accept that. But guess what? There's people that are depressed that go to school. There are people that are depressed that still go to work and do their job. Wasn't that celebrity recently that you think you could dance? Contestant for many years ago, Twitch, was on the Ellen DeGeneres whole, soul, uh, show. God rest his whole. And... He ended up killing himself. He had a beautiful wife. He had beautiful kids. He had a great job. And he was dealing with depression. He was still productive to the outside world, but inside, he wasn't feeling, he was very, very deep and very sad, and he unfortunately took his life away. I get that. Like, I understand that some of us have that challenge, but that doesn't mean that you cannot take action. When I see people talk about it, and not be about it I'll pay attention to the not be about it and when I talk to my ex-wife about my daughter I tell her look I've seen this before 
these patterns I've seen before. I know where that's leading to. And I'm letting you know right now that if we're, if you're not going to allow, or if we're not going to have a change of the guard in some way, shape or form, something has to change from what we're currently doing. Then I'm not going to be a part of that in the future, because guess what? I am not going to clean up anyone's mess anymore when you're warning them for many years about their patterns of behavior and their actions or inactions are going to lead you down a certain destination that is going to take for people to come in and clean it up for you. I've told that to prior relationships. I told that to people in my family. I've told that to friends. But because I'm not a millionaire, because I'm not a person that is of status, they're going to keep doing what they want to do. But then at the end, they guess what? They come back to me. They complain about it. They ask me for help, so on and so forth. And then they don't want to hear you telling them I told you so. And it, I don't get off on that, by the way. But what I want to tell you is that you need to listen to me because it's one thing if I wasn't living a good life. I'm not saying I'm living a great life, but I'm doing much better than probably people were expected to, to live that come from the circumstances I come from. So I, I'm doing pretty okay for myself. Able to provide my daughter with a lot of fun experiences, childhood, love, attention, support. She has a roof over her head. She doesn't have to worry about food. The basic needs are more than met. She's spoiled. It was, it was interesting because one of her friends, she was telling me one of her friends, uh, they, they went ahead and got a, a F, one F, and the parents were giving them a hard time. And I and I said, yeah, you have four, and, and we're easy going. Because at the end of the day, I understand that she's a delicate flower. And I understand that she's not going to listen to what I say. So I told her, mom, I said, that's fine. If you want to enable it, if you don't want to create rules or if we don't want to be consistent with our rules or you feel that maybe the electronics, if we take away too much or cut it off cold turkey, she's going to be depressed and care herself. That's fine. You go on that narrative. But I know this narrative that if she's going to continue on this path, guess what? She's probably going to drop out of school. Guess what? She's probably not going to be able to keep a job or a job that is going to be around the lower intellects, not ambitious people, and she's going to follow a path of bad news that I'm not going to clean up. I'm not. Hold on for a second. Yeah, sorry. I had to take it. I mean, these telemarketers are crazy. They just fucking call and nonstop. Let me go ahead and put this because I don't want to be bothered, but patterns and behaviors of people. And so when I date and I see the patterns, like I said, in my last relationship, it was one where the patterns didn't come out until later on. I always talked about in the past how when status changes, people change. So, for example, when you go from dating to boyfriend and girlfriend, in my experiences, the woman has shifted her mindset. There's more inhibitions that kick in. When they move in, status, when you get engaged, when you get married, so on and so forth. When you have kids, like something happens in the subconscious of people that changes and their behavior is changing. I noticed that. Just like when I notice a friend that talks a good game but doesn't deliver. There's a reason why I don't coach because there's so many people that talk a good game. I did it for one friend one friend of mine one time. He wanted me to help his daughter and help her and and you know teach her how to play basketball. But by the second session, I knew she's just doing this to appease him. She's not doing this because she really wants to do it. She's doing it because she's trying to appease her dad. And number two, she's just hanging out with her friends that are on the team. That's it. There, there wasn't any more than that to it. So when I see people that are not showing me through their actions what they're about, it's very easy for me to deduce what is going on? I, I always say in, in dating, like I had somebody that was, you know, we were flirting, talking and having fun and stuff like that. But they, it was interesting because you can tell that they would say, well, we're going to get together. We're going to hang out. 
And then all of a sudden they would ghost me. They wouldn't want to talk. And then they'll come back like three months later. Hey, what's going on? And that would be like a vicious cycle. They would do basically they lead you up to an expectation and then they fall off. They never delivered. And I and then they were like, well, well, I thought we were friends. Well, I tell them, well, this is the deal. A friend of mine, these are the expectations I have for a friend. We make mutual effort. We reach out to each other. Your actions show me your level of love and appreciation for who I am. But if you're just texting me on your terms, whenever it's convenient for you, whenever you're reaching out, when it's convenient to you, and whenever you want to talk, that's a one-way street. So I wouldn't consider you a friend. I mean, you're more of an acquaintance or a co-worker or whatever the label is that is not close in my circle. So I always tell people, hey, whatever you show me, that's what I'm going to match. I'm going to give you, but when I notice that you're not reciprocating the love and the attention that I'm giving you and the effort, then I'll reset and I'll back up. And then you tell that to, especially to women, man, they don't know how to act because, and, and, and they usually go away because their actions show me their interest or lack thereof. But for whatever reason, people hang on to words and I believe words up to a certain point. If you tell me something and you don't deliver, trust goes out the window. Going back to my daughter. God bless her. She doesn't want to put in the work. She tells me, yeah, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. And I and I warned the therapist to say she's a very good talker. My daughter's a vet. She'll make you believe she's going to execute whatever it is that you're telling her. No matter what. Like my daughter would be like, no, dad, this, that, and the third. And then she goes back to doing what she's not supposed to do every time. Now, the goal is to unwind these habits through therapy is to go ahead and help her understand that responsibility is part of the deal. And and it is it takes doing things you don't want to do. And people, that's what it is, is that when it comes to actions is because people don't do them because it's not things that they don't want to do. Or they're truly in their heart have some fear or concern of not going through with it. Whatever it is. But when I see those patterns, I believe them. And then they then they call you um, you're sensitive, they call you stubborn, they call you then you're you're kind of given this angle of why you're the problem. I don't want to. I don't want you to be clingy, but I'm. I'm calling you. I don't want. I don't expect you to call me every day. But or I don't expect you to come and see me just as much as I see you. But I need to see some sort of effort from your end as well. Like actual manual labor that takes time to do. Because that lets me know that you care about me. That's why my friend, when he passed away last year, it destroyed me for a good while because. He was one of the few people that I have known on this earth that if I, he said he was going to be there, he was going to be there. Didn't matter if his wife, didn't matter if his girlfriend, didn't matter if his children. It did not matter. Once he said, I'm going to be there, I'm going to be there. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. That's the way he operated. That's the way he did things, which is the way I operate. A man of your word. The word is bond. Whatever you say, you're going to follow up on, okay? And and that's something that I live very strongly by. But unfortunately, a lot of people are used to just talking shit, saying, oh, we're going to hang out, we're going to do this, we're going to do that, yeah, I'm going to do this, and then they never do it. And then you wonder why I just disconnect or I'll stay away or I'll tell you I'm going to reset this whole relationship because you're not making the effort that I'm making towards you. So if you want to message me every other week, cool. If you want to just talk and keep it light, cool. If you want to talk about how we're going to get together for dinner or lunch and we never get together, that's cool. It takes actions. I have to see them. And when I don't see actions, then it's hard for me to trust. Right now, I don't trust my little one. 
with food at night. So what do I do? I lock up the pantry. I lock up the fridge. Locked. Locked. Because she says, I'm not going to do it, dad. But she does it continuously. So I can't trust. And when I don't trust, it's hard for me to believe what you say. Unless you show through your actions. Consistent actions. Classic of key, just that thing like Bobby.